Hello and welcome to ET Garage. Today's video is going to be about this Dana 36 and how I'm going to make an attempt to repair it and what's wrong with it. It's all tight. All right, here we have the typical Dana 36. Uh, if you don't know what those are, that's leave a link somewhere up here at the end of the video. And anyway, this is uh, has 307 gears in it. This is what they refer to as the thin gears. They have thin and thick gears. I'm not going to get into that in this video. But anyway, it's your typical Dana type differential. And the reason this needs repair isn't because anything's broken. It's because it had one wheel slip when it was in the car. I have a replacement in there right now. Uh, that works good, uh, but I am going to get this apart and show you uh, what the problem is and uh, what I think might fix it. So uh, hold tight and uh, I'll get this apart. I already got the caps loose and I've already got the C-clips out for the axle. So I'll get this apart and uh, we'll see how it goes. And I'll show you, try and sh try and show you uh, what's wrong. Okay, hopefully you can see all this. I basically have the axle stubs. I got the differential carrier out. I, I got axle one of the axle stubs mounted in a vise. Uh, carrier on top of that. The other axle stub on top. And I have this adapter plate so I can stick a half inch uh, torque wrench on here. Now it's supposed to, the clutches are not supposed to slip. With the minimum they're supposed to slip is like 90 foot pounds, I believe it is. I'll try and look it up in the service mail. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But this is torque wrench is set for 90 foot pounds. And you can see this spinning. And I'm not clicking the torque wrench. Okay, so it should be 90 foot pounds to take in order for me to spin this. I shouldn't be able to spin this. So I'm gonna lower this. For like 70 foot pounds and see if it clicks then. Okay, 70 foot pounds and it's still spinning. It shouldn't be doing that. Uh, that means either the clutches are worn, which they're not, because one of the first things I did when I had this problem, when, it, when that start problem started, was I took the differential out, I put new clutches in it. I still did the same thing, but anyway, I'm gonna move move this lower and see what it clicks at. Let's go down to 50. Yeah, 50 foot pounds. That's too much. Uh, that's way too le too little. Now, if you have your, if you wanted to check your clutches while well, the differential's in the car, you would chalk your wheels, jack just one rear wheel off the the ground. So you want to chalk your front wheels. Parking brake off. Transmission in neutral. This is important. With the wheel on the car, you should grab it. And usually if you can spin it by hand, it usually means your clutches are, are starting to go. Uh, in this case, it ain't the clutches. So I'm gonna get this apart and I'm gonna try and show you what the, the problem is. And the problem is, not only do the clutches wear, the inside surface of this carrier wears. That's what I think is going on here. Now there is a possibility that it's something going on with your uh, spider gears. 
I'll take them out and I'll show them to you. It's possible they're wearing and they're coming in and releasing pressure on the clutches. And you can't get new ones for a Dana 36. There was a company and uh, Tom's differential. Tom, who was the owner of the company, has passed away and it's, I believe it's owned by someone else. I don't know if you can still get the kits, but you could, they have a conversion for Dana 35 spider gears. I actually have one of them. I've had them sitting around for years in another differential. So I might try and put them in there and see if that works. Uh, if it does, great. I can put this differential back together and it'll be good to go. If not, then uh, I'll show you what the options are. Uh, normally the only option is to get a new one, if you can get one. And if you can, they're going to be expensive, seven, eight hundred bucks expensive at least. Uh, if, for that kind of money, if I, if they made them, if they made a true track differential for the Dana 36, I'd convert it to that. That'd be great because that doesn't use clutches. Uh, but uh, they don't do that. They make it for the Dana 35. They make it for the Dana 44. Dana 36 uh, parts are starting to get uh, scarce. I mean, you can get the bearings, you can get the seals, uh, you can get aftermarket ring and pinions that are going to be different gears than the, like I, I think the lowest one you can get is uh, 354. I think you have a choice of 354 or 373 for the Dana 36. Sometimes you can find the 259 gears. Uh, which nobody wants. I believe Yukon might still have them if you're lucky. Uh, and uh, the 307s, which are the most popular, no one makes. I don't understand that. If someone were to make 307s uh, replacement gears, they probably have a market for them, but nobody does. So this is what we have. So uh, hold on, I'll get this apart, and uh, I'll show you what's going on. Okay, here I got the differential apart and the spider gears out, and hopefully I will be able to uh, display everything on the camera good. But basically, I'm going to try and simplify this. These are the clutches, right here. They're actually in pretty good shape, uh, probably because they weren't grabbing. But uh, these are the clutches. They go in a certain way, and they go in here and make contact with that surface. Now that surface wears. Another thing that wears are the spider gears. And these like shims here, you can see are like a polished surface. These wear. And uh, these wear. This is what the clutches lock up in. Sort of like a motorcycle. Try and think of a motorcycle if you're familiar with motorcycle clutches. And they would all go in there and uh, hopefully I'm just displaying this correctly in a way you understand. But uh, basically what's happening is when this spins when one wheel needs to give when you go around a turn these clutches are going to spin, uh, slip. And you need X amount of force. If the clutches are worn and this surface is worn, they won't grab, just like you know, brakes wear or clutches wear in a car or in a motorcycle. Uh, one thing that causes them to be forced in is the spider gear. And this coming down forces it that way, of course. And as this surface here wears, it also comes that way. So it could be that this ain't the problem, that it's the spider gears. So, first thing I am going to try is this adapter kit. I'll show you the difference here. See the difference in the gears? This is out of a Dana 35. This is out of a Dana 36. And you can see the difference. There's also a uh, difference, but you can get the Dana 35s, you can't get the Dana 36, so 
Uh, some people have their opinions about them. I had this in a set of 259 gears, Dana 36. I never had a problem with them. In fact, they had almost no wear on them. Uh, same with the clutches. Clutches are in good shape, too. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in and then test it and see if that fixes it. If it doesn't, the only other thing I could think of would be to take one of these clutches and have it precision ground to like a thickness of say maybe five thousandths, ten thousandths and use them as shims and try shimming it that way. Uh, I mean I could think of another way that would be to weld up this area in here and then I'd have to create a special tool to go in there and machine it. Uh, that would be very difficult. I'm not sure how they do that. They must have some type of shaft that goes through here with a tool that comes out and and machines that. It's the only way I could think of, but uh, that, will, that would be very difficult to do that. So that's probably not going to happen. Uh, see if I can get you a better shot in, inside there. Uh, maybe you guys can see that better. But that's the surface right there that the clutches wear against. And you have it on both sides. Hold this sucker over. And that one's going to be a little bit more difficult to see, but if you can't see it, fine. If you can't, oh well. That's the best I can do. I don't know. Hopefully uh, this works out. I'll get it back together and uh, stick the torque wrench on it and see if it works. Hopefully that works. Hopefully that will be a fix because uh, I've heard of other people out there with the same problem. And new clutches didn't fix it, so see if this works. And I'll get back to you here shortly. Get this thing together. seen there the uh, vice broke on me uh, so I went ahead and removed the vice and uh, just drilled the mountain plate for the vice stand and uh, bolted the yoke or the uh, axle half shaft directly to that uh, I was gonna do a video I actually videotaped on how to put this back together and it didn't come out very good. So what I'm going to do is leave a link up there to a video by Yukon. It's not a Dana 36, but it's uh, Dana. And it's uh, basically the exact same thing, except bigger. And it goes together exactly the same. So watch their video. It's actually very good and uh, very helpful if you ever decide to do this. These can be tricky to do if you've never done them before. So don't be afraid to take it to a professional, someone who does this all the time. Uh, if you have, For some reason, you have to have this done. But anyway, I'm going to get the torque wrench on here and uh, see how it does. I got this set for 90 foot-pounds, by the way. All right, 90 foot-pounds and it ain't moving. Now, uh, I'm going to take it up to, I don't know, 150 foot-pounds, I guess. There we go, 150 foot-pounds. It's just barely moving 150 foot pounds and uh, yeah it takes over it takes 150 foot pounds to move this thing I'm satisfied with that and these aren't new clutches either so if I were to put new clutches in here it'd probably be more and uh, I'm quite satisfied with that 
Uh, I think I said at the beginning of the video I was just going to go ahead and uh, if it worked out, put it together and it was good to go. Uh, but I kind of put this together fast and, uh, and loose and there's no sense going through all this trouble and not putting a brand new set of clutch uh, clutches in there. Even though these look good and they're working good, I'd rather do that and I'd probably if I do decide to use this, maybe I'll just put a whole new bearing kit and seal in it, and uh, this way it will be considered completely rebuilt. But uh, I'm satisfied with that. I'm very happy with it. I'm glad that worked out. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I'm happy that worked. I got an extra differential if I ever need it. Uh, maybe one day I won't need it. Maybe one day I'll update, I'll upgrade to the Dana 44. Uh, the only reason I don't upgrade to the Dana 44 is because like I don't really need it. Uh, I don't drag race. If I was drag racing all the time and doing hard launches with sticky tires, I'd definitely upgrade to the Dana 44 and steel half shafts. Uh, because uh, and then I'd probably break something else on uh, in the suspension. That's usually what happens if you. Uh, the C4 Corvette rear drive line is not really designed for hard launches, uh, even with the Dana 44. Even people do it, and uh, people who do it, uh, if you look at the forums, it seems like people break them all the time. Uh, I've never broken a Dana 36. They, uh, I've done track days, I've done uh, track sprint events, uh, autocross. Uh, every now and then I'll we'll take it to the drag strip usually for testing to and then I just launch it real easy and I'm using all season radials so anyway I'm real happy that that fixed that uh, I always wanted to try this I had this thing sitting in the basement all this time hope that's helpful in case you were ever running into a problem where your uh, posi traction isn't working on your C4 Corvette same thing that applies to this Dana 36 will also apply to a Dana 44. They're almost virtually identical except for the size. And like the uh, even a Dana 60, or if you look, they're almost exactly identical except they're bigger. Uh, Dana 35 also, they're pretty identical. Dana 30, they're just uh, different sizes and different dimensions. But this part here is uh, pretty similar. So. Uh, going to end it here. I guess I have to uh, weld this vise back up. This isn't uh, from Home Depot, by the way, this vise. I've had it for years, a uh, long time ago from Lowe's. It actually broke on me once before, and I welded it, and it held up for years up until this just now. So uh, that'll be my next project. I'm not going to make a video. I actually have a video on it somewhere on my YouTube channel. If I can remember, I'll leave a link. But uh, I guess it looks like I'm repairing it again. But, uh, anyway, I hope I didn't just uh, ramble on too much. And I want to thank everybody for watching. I uh, hope you're all having a better day than I am. And God bless.